Okay, good morning once again, guys. Uh, today I'm going to show you the uh, solution that I have for the statement of cash flows. This is supposed to be an assignment of yours. I hope you did the assignment, guys. I hope you tried uh, to do the assignment. Okay, I'm not going to share this with you because you're supposed to do this on your own. Uh, I'm going to open uh, a few minutes for questions in case uh, you have uh, a dif different answers, guys. But if you just follow the process of constructing the statement of cash flows, you should have been able to compute for this. And then below we have here the measures, okay? And then the statement of retained earnings. So before we start our lesson for today, let's uh, quickly look at this. Okay, so the, uh, for the cash flow, we're investigating the increase in cash from 7282 to 14,000, so 6718. Uh, my working papers, guys, shows here that for operating, for operating, I got uh, cash used for operations, 17536. For investing, it's cash used, 17050. And for, for financing, cash provided, 194304. So if we add this, 6718, okay, so it's okay. And then... This is just the summary of the statement of cash flows. Okay, so we have here 170, 17, and 194. If we add them, guys, we get the 6718. And then uh, cash balance at the beginning, 7282, giving us the cash balance of 14,000 at the end. Okay. So for the uh, for the dividends, it's 55,000, okay? <clears throat> for operating, I just pick, pick, got the net income after tax, add back depreciation. Okay, so there was also an increase in common stock here from 460 to 160, 1680. That means there was a additional stock issued and that's a source of cash. The difference is 1220. For financing, uh, we, I, we have to do the same. We have to construct the uh, flow of your, uh, of the acquisition. Kasi ang binigay sa atin yung net fixed assets. Okay, net fixed assets dito. So kailangan natin i-compute kung magkano talaga yung nag-acquisition. If you even notice guys na boom, lumiit yung, ano, no? lumiit yung net fixed assets. So you might be, tempted to think that th there, this is a source of cash. Hindi, no? Kasi net fixed assets yan, kailangan natin i-compute yung acquisition. So I'm getting 17.050 for the acquisition. Okay? Any questions, guys? Any clarifications? Uh, dapat, guys, nagawa nyo muna to kasi bago kayo makakapag-ask ng question, which uh, I told you before, no? So, kung hindi nyo ginawa, hindi kayo makakapagtanong na, ng question dito kasi uh, hindi nyo nasubukan kung, kung paano gawin. No? So, I strongly encourage you guys to do it on your own. Okay? So, anyway, recorded naman to. Makikita nyo kung magkano yung mga values. You can check. And then, if you have any questions later on, you can PM me for clarifications. Okay? So, for the... Uh, uh, may questions ba? May gumawa ba sa inyo na na medyo hindi nagtatali yung ano natin, yung ginawa natin? Uh, excuse me po, sir. Yes? Sir, di ko pa mahanap yung dividends, kaya uh, yung financing okay. ko, it's 971,662. Mm. Okay, thank you, Liam. That's a very good question. No? So, if you notice, guys, wala tayong dividends dito. No? Hindi nakalagay yung dividends sa uh, income statement. But that can be solved. Okay, that can be solved. So how do you solve dividends? Uh, well, one way is to construct your statement of retained earnings. Dito makikita din natin yan. But another way is to solve natin. So thank you, Liam, for that question. Very, very excellent question. I was expecting that question. No? Kasi dito, sa income statement natin, hindi nakalagay yung, ano, hindi nakalagay yung dividends. But again, guys, okay, makukompute natin yan. How? Okay, ito yung net income natin, di ba? 253584. Okay. If we take a look at the uh, balance sheet, okay, 
si retained earnings okay from 9763 97632 naging 2962.16 so what happened what happened to retained earnings nag increase siya ng 198584 okay if you get the difference sa retained earnings guys yun yun nag increase siya ng 198584 ibig sabihin nun guys from the net income after tax na 253 ang dividend ang retention rate natin ang retained is 198584 okay so let me illustrate that net income after tax sabi natin 253584 let go So 253, ayan na guys, ha? ito yung income natin, no? 253,584. I'll put it here. Net income after tax natin ng 2020 is 253,484. Okay. Sabi natin, dalawa lang naman pupuntahan ito, eh, di ba? Either dividends or flowed back to operations in the form of addition to retained earnings. If we take a look at this one, your retained earnings natin nag-increase by 198584. Yun. 198584. 198584. Okay. Therefore, guys, ayan. Magkano yung naging dividends? Diba? So you just subtract 253484 minus yung binalik as retained earnings, 198584. You'll be getting ito, 55,000. That was your dividends, 55,000. Okay, so although hindi siya linagay dito sa income statement, masasold pa rin natin siya. So trace natin yung paano gumalaw yung retained earnings natin. Okay? Okay, Liam, you get plus three points for that question. Thank you so much. Ibig sabihin na, na sinubuka mong gawin yung ano, no? Okay, remind me, Liam, ha, yung plus three mo, ha? Okay, thank you, Pastor. Okay. okay, very good, very good. I appreciate that. So, kuha mo na kung bakit, nag, bakit naging 55,000 yung dividends natin. Ito. No? It's supposed to be negative kasi, ano yan, ha, di ba? Uh, use of cash yan, nag-issue nag tayo ng dividends ng 55,000. Okay? So, uh, guys, I encourage you to uh, work on this, no? Uh, may tip na kayo kung paano nakuha si dividends. Okay, then you should also be able to uh, easily compute for your for the statement of retained earnings. No? So this was the start on January 1, 97.632. My net income tayo na 2584. Uh, Tapos ito yung total niya. And then we subtract the dividends of 55,000. Okay, so dapat ang ang ending retained earnings natin, 296216. If we check, guys, yan, 296216 tama. So that's your statement of retained earnings. Okay? In the statement of retained earnings, andyan dyan yung simula, andyan yung net income, andyan yung uh, dividends, okay? Tapos andyan yung, uh, indirectly makikita natin yung uh, flowed back to operations, no? Pag minus natin to guys, uh, from your net income minus your dividends, and dyan yung added, added to retain earnings. Okay, so let's also go to this one. Okay, tingnan natin guys yung mga measures natin ng NOWC, TOC. Okay, so <clears throat> I hope you got this. Okay, yung NOWC at saka TOC, pretty straightforward guys. So NOWC is simply your operating current assets. Okay, minus your operating current liabilities. So if we take a look at our balance sheet, okay, ano yung mga operating current assets natin? Cash, AR inventories. Hindi kasama si short-term investments. And then minus natin si operating current liabilities, which are accounts payable, accruals. Hindi kasama si notes payable. Okay, so sum of your operating current assets minus the sum of your operating current liabilities 
you get this figure. Okay, sum of operating current assets minus sum of operating current liabilities you have for 2018 Okay, then we just copy the formula okay. for 2019 and 2020. Okay, for TOC, guys, it's just your NOWC plus your net fixed assets. Since given naman yung net fixed assets, i-add lang natin sa, uh, sa NOWC yan. No? NOWC plus net fixed assets, you get your TOC. Okay, so we can see that over time, nag increase yung TOC natin. Yung pinoprovide sa management na total operating capital, it's increasing over time. Okay, net investment in TOC. Wala tayo sa 2018 kasi wala naman tayong 2017. Di ba ang net investment, minamainus natin 2018 minus 2017. Since wala tayong 2017, wala tayo dito. For 2019, it's 2019 minus the beginning, which is end ng 2018. So this is just the difference. Okay. All right. So sabi natin kailangan natin tong net investment in TOC when we compute for your free cash flow. And then just copy the formula. So this is the difference between 2020 ending minus 2020 beginning or uh, ending on 2019. <clears throat> okay. Then we compute for your NOPAT. Uh, sabi natin ang quick formula ng NOPAT is just the EBIT times 1 minus tax rate. So naglagay lang ako dito ng tax rate. Binigyan ko lang siya ng pangalan, yung tax rate. Okay, although na, na, I didn't see na meron na pala dito. No? Sorry about that. So our NOPAT is simply our EBIT. C10 is your EBIT. Earnings before interest and taxes. And then times 1 minus tax rate. So that's 1 minus your tax rate. This is your tax rate. Okay, therefore we get this one and then copy to the right so we notice that uh, no path for 2018 was higher than no path for 2019 uh lumaki talaga nung 2020 no 301 so uh here we can only say that uh nag, nag decrease siya ng 2019 tapos nag increase naman siya ng 2020 as to evaluating the performance we just can't say outright no? kasi kailangan natin I compare to dun sa total operating capital sa TOC. Kaya nga tayo may RO, ROIC na figure. Okay. So free cash flow naman will be it's simply your no path, no? No path minus the net investment. Okay. So you can see here that free cash flow is negative. Okay. Ang question natin, ang negative ba na free cash flow, is it good or bad? Okay. We have to be careful in answering that. Hindi ROI. Hindi to guys, ano, ha? hindi EVA to. Pag EVA, alam natin na kapag negative yung EVA, bad yun. It means value was destroyed. EVA has to be, always be positive in order for us to, be, to uh, conclude that value was, was created. Ang FCF guys, ang free cash flow iba. So dito, linagay ko lang formula dito. Na free cash flow is equal to no path minus investment in TOC. So my question is, is a negative free cash flow good or bad? Depende yun, guys. It depends. If the negative free cash flow was due to a high investment in TOC, kasi tingnan nyo, guys, no? Uh, this can be negative if this is very high. <clears throat> okay? So walang kinalaman yung NOPAT doon. Uh, just looking at this, investment in TOC. If the investment in, in total operating capital was high, which led to a negative free cash flow, that, that means, guys, na okay yung negative free cash flow. Kasi, pinuflow back sa operations eh. So, nagkakarga sa operations ng capital. Kasi alam naman natin, na kapag gine, ina, ano yun, ginagamit sa operations, then that will generate more operating profit. No? So, if the free cash flow was due to a, an increase, a very high increase in TOC, then that's good. No? Katulad dito, guys. <coughs> Net investment in TOC was 1119. From 1138, yung TOC naging 2257. So napakataas ng net investment. Okay, So the negative free cash flow here is attributable to the, the, the very high uh, increase in TOC. Then that's good, guys. 
that's good. Okay lang yon, kahit negative yung free cash flow. Okay? On the other hand, guys, if the negative, the, the negative free cash flow is due to a negative NOPAT, kunyari, negative na yung NOPAT, in the first place, pag negative yung NOPAT, guys, tapos babawasan pa ng investment in TOC, talaga magiging negative yung free cash flow. Then that means, guys, na uh, that's a bad sign of a negative free cash flow. Okay? Kasi ang baba ng NOPAT eh. Kaya naging negative yung free cash flow. Okay, so just just be aware of that, guys. Na a negative free cash flow does not automatically mean a bad performance. Okay, again, to summarize, it could have been negative kasi napakataas ang in-invest sa POC, which make, makes a good, uh, good negative free cash flow. But if the negative free cash flow is due to a very low no path, then yun ang problema natin. Kunyari, negative na yung NOPAT. Pwede ba maging negative yung NOPAT, guys? Kasi ang NOPAT is uh, EBIT times 1 minus tax rate. Yes, pwede maging negative yung NOPAT natin kung negative na yung EBIT. If the EBIT was already negative in the first place, okay, ibig sabihin, uh, sales less all the costs except interest and taxes. Kung mas malaki na yung mga costs natin relative to sales, then negative na yung EBIT natin negative na yung operating profit natin. <clears throat> okay? In that case, guys, magiging negative yung NOPAT natin. Okay? So in, the, in that instance, negative yung NOPAT, negative din yung free cash flow. In that instance, guys, negative yung free cash flow is bad because it was due to a negative NOPAT or a very low NOPAT. Okay? So I hope that's clear, guys, yung free cash flow na negative kasi dati yung free cash flow na ginawa natin, positive siya. Okay, then ROIC guys. Paano natin kinocompute si ROIC? Again, return yan guys, return. So, ang minimeasure natin is your NOPAT divided by the beginning capital. So, that's your ROIC. So, NOPAT divided by the beginning capital. For 20, 2019, it turns out that it's 0.92 and that's way below the WAC of 10%. So, ibig sabihin dito guys, value was destroyed. Okay, 0.92 na ROIC, less than the WAC, palpak yung performance. On the other hand, nung, nung 2020, okay, which is your no path of 2020 divided by the beginning capital, we see that the ROIC is 13.36%, higher than your WAC of 10%, which means value was created. Okay, value was created for 2020. <coughs> okay, then... Uh, so, okay tayo ng 2020, ROIC is greater than 10%, which means, guys, that if we compute for the EVA in 2019, negative yung EVA nito. Tapos naman, yung, pag i-compute natin yung EVA ng 2020, sigurado tayo na positive to. Kasi greater than WAC yung, ano natin, yung, uh, greater than WAC yung ROIC natin. Okay, then we compute for the market value added, which is just, how do we compute for the market value added? Market capitalization lang. So how do we compute for market capitalization? Ay, mali ako dito. Ah, tama. Stock price multiplied by the number of shares. Okay, so this is your market capitalization. Magano na ba yung value ng stocks? Yun? Six times the number of shares, 100,000. Okay, and then we subtract that from the book value. Total equity is 557632. So when we subtract that, we get a positive value of market value added for 5368. So in terms of MBA, okay. <clears throat> Kasi uh, mas mataas na yung market value ng equity natin compared to the book value. Pero mas maganda yung performance ng 2020 kasi sa 2020, so the stock price increased actually, no? 12.17. Tapos nag-issue pa ng new shares, so 250. So ang market capitalization natin minus the uh, book value which is 1977. So you're getting here 1065348. So in terms of market value added, okay for 2019 at 2020. But the more the more strict measure is the ROIC and then the EBA. So dito guys, dalawang EBA ang pinakita ko dito. Same same result yan. Yung una, yung EBA using NOPAT. Ito yung ginamit natin last time. No? So nagsimula tayo sa NOPAT. Then, minus natin yung capital na binigay tapos times the weighted average cost of capital. 
how do you call this guys how do you call this yung total operating capital multiplied by the WAC. this is called your capital charge diba so yung nopat binawasan natin ng capital charge kasi hindi nga libre tong TOC na to no? may opportunity cost diyan so we're going to charge management for the use of the TOC by multiplying it with the weighted average cost of capital okay so dito sa 2019 <clears throat> so we have nopat and then ima minus natin kung magkano yung TOC at the beginning, which is this one, multiplied by the WAC of 10%. Okay, and it turns out that as expected, negative yung EBA natin. Okay, we expect that it's a negative uh, EBA kasi nga yung ROIC natin is less than weighted average cost of capital. Okay, tapos dito guys, dito naman, ganun din. No? Ganun din dito. So that's your no fat minus the beginning capital times times your weighted average cost of capital. Okay, so we're having a positive EBA as expected, guys, kasi yung ROIC natin is greater than the weighted average cap cost of capital. So value was created in 2020. However, value was destroyed in 2019. Okay, there's another way to compute, guys, your, your EBA. And I didn't show this last time, so I'm showing it now. <clears throat> it makes use of ROIC. Okay, so, so how is this computed? Binigyan tayo ng capital, okay, at the beginning. And then, magkano yung kinita natin doon? Yung ROIC. However, we have to subtract the WAC to get the net the net uh, gain, no? So, ROIC minus WAC. So, dito expected natin since ROIC natin is 0.92, ang WAC natin 10%, then we'll get negative talaga. <clears throat> so, consistent dito guys, no? Pag ang ROIC natin less than WAC, then we will get a negative EBA. Okay? So, uh, ang difference itong formula na to, guys, okay, pareho silang gumagamit ng TOC. Parehong gumagamit ng WAC. Ang difference lang, ito ginagamit yung ROIC, ito naman ginagamit yung NOPAT. But we will get the same results. No? So here, okay, <clears throat> so beginning capital, tapos, times the difference between your ROIC and then your <clears throat> WAC. So negative to, di ba? So negative times a positive, you get a negative number. Okay? So dito naman, guys, ganun din. How much was beginning capital? Ito, TOC. And then multiply it by the net of your ROIC and then your WAC. Okay? Since uh, ito, guys, ito, if I get the value of this, so that's 0 0.03, no? So that's around 3%, 3.35%. That's the difference between 13.36 at saka yung 10%. Okay. So we expect a positive value. Okay. And they match, no? Pareho. So dito guys, pinakita natin kung paano kukumpitin yung EBA in two ways. Okay. Using ROIC and then using NOPA. Pareho nilang ginagamit ang TOC beginning at saka yung weighted average cost of capital. Okay, pause muna ako guys. Any questions? With this? Again guys, hindi, nyo ma hindi kayo makakapag-question kung hindi nyo ginawa yung, ano, yung homework. No? Uh, but uh, you do it guys. Gawin nyo parang pa-practice nyo. Uh, again guys, I'm not going to share this. I want you to do this on your own. No? Okay, anyway, uh, I, I know you're, you're taking pictures. So alam nyo na kung ano yung mga answers dapat. Okay, any questions sa pag-compute itong ano? Uh, nitong NOWC, TOC, etc. Okay. Again guys, clear so far ba? Paki-chat. Clear so far. Uh, by the way, Liam, did I answer your question dun sa dividends? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions guys? Okay, kung clear ba so far? Clear? Okay, good. Okay, guys, I strongly encourage you to do it, huh? please. Uh, kasi that will increase our mastery on preparing the statement of cash flows and also on these computations. Okay. Okay, let's now go to the other worksheet. Uh, dun sa, i-continue natin yung, ano, yung, yung pag-compute ng, ano, ano, ng, Okay. 
also do the uh, I think it's copy patient's pipeline. Okay. <clears throat> then guys, make sure that <clears throat> that you format your horizontal and vertical analysis in the same manner as your balance sheet and income statement. Okay. Uh, dito guys, sabi natin, ito may problema tayo. Yung horizontal analysis, nagkakaproblema tayo dyan kung ano, kung, kung may negative, no? Ito, negative kasi ito. So, ito, sabi natin, nag-increase to eh. From negative 158, naging positive 422. Lumalabas dito na yung original formula natin, yung hindi natin linagyan ng absolute, no? nagka-problema tayo kasi lumalabas sa negative. Okay? And that's uh, that's wrong kasi nag-increase yung value. Eh. Okay? So, we will have to address that. I'm going to share with you an Excel file okay, for you to study. Okay, pakita ko lang to, no? So let me just illustrate the the uh, the problem here. Okay. Uh, can you see the screen, guys? <clears throat> Ita ba? Okay. Um, so we have to look at So first, take a look at this. Uh, ito yung uh, coffee. No? Uh, we have see here some items. Tapos ito yung profit nila nung previous year. So mga losses sila. Tapos ang bagong profit nila, ito 50. So pare-pareho silang profit na 50. Kaso nga lang guys, magkakaiba silang, ano, ano, magkakaiba silang loss the, the, previous, uh, uh, the previous year. So if we take a look at this, Ito from negative 10, naging 50. So ang change niya, di ba? 60. Nag-improve siya ng 60. Ito naman from negative 60, naging 50. Nag-increase nag siya ng 110. <clears throat> so kung titignan natin to guys, di ba? Mas malaki yung change nito. Then logically guys, dapat mas malaki yung, ano, yung increase percentage change nitong, itong pit. Kasi mas malaki yung ano niya, yung, yung linake, no? 110, ito 60 lang. And yet, if we're going to stick to the formula, ito, which is, gawin na lang natin to, is equal to, di ba yung formula ang sinabi natin, kunin natin absolute figure, di ba? Kasi pag may negative, sabi, sabi ko last time, kunin natin absolute figure ng new over the old minus one in order to remove the, uh, remove the negative, no? Kasi kung ang, gina, ang ginawa lang natin, sorry, ang ginawa lang natin, new over old minus 1. So ito yung ginamit natin guys. Ayan, ang problema natin, negative yung ano natin, negative yung, negative yung mga percentage change, which is not correct. Kasi sabi natin, pag negative, pag negative guys, ibig sabihin, nag bumaba yung value. Eh, hindi naman bumaba eh. Ito nga yung old o negative, tapos lumaki siya, no? So it gives us a negative. Okay, so how do we address that? Lagyan natin ng, kung yung old natin negative, lagyan natin absolute value, yung buong expression. So naging positive na siya ngayon. Kaso may problema tayo dito guys. Okay, kasi lumalabas dito, bakit 183% lang yung percentage change nito? Eh di ba 110 yung in-increase nito? Di ba? 110, no? Tapos ito 60 lang yung in-increase. Pero mas malaking percentage yun siya. Okay, that's the problem with this one. No? Kung ilalagay lang natin na absolute value. So, kasi it does not capture really yung percentage change. Kaya nga yung iba guys, you'll see yung iba sa ibang mga financial statements. Pag may negative na, hindi na nila linalagyan ng value kasi nakakalito eh. No? Nakakalito. Linalagyan nila lang ng, uh, ng double na ano. O empty na lang. No? O lalagyan nila na lang ng P Ibig sabihin kung positive yung change o L o N kung negative yung change. So they don't put the figure kasi nga because of this. No? Because of this. Kaya it doesn't make sense guys na ito yung cakes na 110 yung in-increase niya tapos mas maliit yung percentage change. Diba? <clears throat> Mukhang mali. Ito 60 lang yung linaki niya pero 600% yung change siya. So there's something wrong with this one. 
Okay, ganun din dito guys, kung ang negative naman yung nasa new. Okay, tingnan natin to ah. Ito, <clears throat> so ito dapat, gawin natin dito is equal to abs, absolute value ng this over this minus 1. Okay, take a look at this. No? Yung formula na ginagamit natin na uh, uh, the new over the old minus 1, okay, Eh kaso sabi natin may negative dito, di ba? Kaya dapat lalagyan natin ng absolute value para Okay. Uh, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Mali, mali ako dito, no? Uh, wait. So dapat walang absolute to. Sorry for this. Yan. So tama na yan, no? Tama siya. Negative 120 to. Okay. Kasi from 50, naging negative 10. So bumaba talaga siya, kaya dapat negative. Ang binaba nito, 60. Ito naman guys, sa cakes, ang binaba, 110. Okay, pero pag titinan natin, bakit yung percentage change nito, negative 120, ito yung percentage change, negative 110. Di ba dapat mas malaki yung percentage change nitong cakes? Kasi 110 yung binaba niya. Eh. Ito, 60 lang, di ba? So bakit mas malaki yung percentage change ni coffee? kaysa kay uh, ano kaysa kay cakes. So there's something wrong guys with ano pag may negative either old or new, nagkakaproblema tayo, no? So I'm going to I'm going to uh copyin ko to. I'm going to uh, send this file tapos maglalagay na lang ako ng another ano here uh, to address this uh, seemingly uh, wrong ano wrong solution. No? Kaya nagkakaroon ng problema guys, anytime na may negative, whether it's in the old <coughs> or in the new, <coughs> you will have conflicting results na parang mali yata. No? Just to summarize guys, dito, okay, from a negative value, naging <coughs> pare-pareho silang positive, ha? pare pare yung value nga. Eh. So mas malaki yung ano nito, yung in-increase, 110, as compared to this one, 60. Itong 110 na to, mas, mas, malaki, mas malaki siya kaysa any of this. And yet, yung percentage niya, mas maliit kaysa any of this. No? So, which which seems absurd. Okay, ganun din dito, guys. Ganun din dito. Okay, so this uh, gives us a, you know, a seemingly a wrong wrong value. No? Okay, so I'm going to, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop that discussion for now. Gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo na Sa horizontal analysis, walang problema sa vertical analysis. No, no problem with that. Doon lang sa horizontal analysis, we're, we're comparing years. Kasi kinocompare natin yung changes. And that's where the problem lies. Okay? So I'll send this to you guys. Tapos tingnan nyo na lang kung ano yung ano, mag, magsasuggest ako ng isang solution dito uh, para mas, uh, mukhang mas realistic yung, yung figure na yun. Dapat mas malaki yung percentage change nito. Kasi 110 yung change niya. Okay. So, uh, clear yung, yung, yung conundrum natin dito, guys. Conundrum is a puzzle. Okay. Kasi parang may puzzle tayo dito. Ano? Parang mali yata. No? 110 yung in-increase yun. Tapos, mas mali yung percentage change niya. So, that, that seems to be a conundrum or a puzzle or a riddle. No? Bakit kaya ganun? Okay. So, I'm going to send this, guys. I-propose ko na lang. And then, a, a suggested answer kung... How to deal when there when there are negative values dun sa old and new. Okay, so let's go back now to our file, the, the file we were using last time. Okay, so I hope clear sa atin guys yung ano ah, yung tinitina natin, yung, uh, yung vertical analysis where sa income statement, 100% yung sales. Okay, and then everything is, everything is, uh, is compared to sales. So for example, itong 0.834 na to, ano ibig sabihin ng 0.834 na yan? Technically, it means 0.834 over 1. Kasi ratio yan eh. Itong common size statement na to, ratio ta. Ratio siya. It's cost of goods sold divided by sales. So that's 0.834 over 1, which means that for every 1 test of sales, you have a cost of 83 centavos. Yun ang ibig sabihin yan. Ito, 0.939 over 1 din. So everything, guys, common size nga eh. Everything is 
pegged or benchmarked against sales. So for one peso of sales, ang total cost natin doon is 94 centavos. For one peso of sales, ang pinakakita natin, bottom line natin, 2.6 centavos. Okay? So that's what we get when we do the common size statement. Sa balance sheet naman, at saka sa, uh, sa balance sheet, it's, uh, it's pegged to your total assets. <clears throat> ano ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nito guys, 76% okay, of your total assets is invested at current assets. Okay? Sa so bawat piso na current asset, na total asset, 76 centavos doon ang current asset, 23 centavos ang fixed assets. Okay, so you can see now the, uh, <coughs> dito bumaba, no? Bumaba yung ano natin, 67 centavos per peso of total assets, yung current assets, 32 centavos yung fixed assets. Okay? So we can just see uh, across over the years, tas ang magandang guys, Again, kung i-benchmark natin to against, di ba, benchmark against, ano yung dalawang i-benchmark natin? Okay, ano yun guys? Benchmark. So when we do ratio analysis, ang tingin dapat dalawa, two-pronged yung focus natin. Benchmark against what? And against what? <clears throat> ano yung first benchmark natin? The first is T, the second is C. <clears throat> so benchmark against what, guys? What's T? which we have been doing uh, that since last time, last session. Benchmark against, anyone? Anyone, paki-chat na lang kung... What are we doing here, guys? Saan natin bin benchmark Benchmark against, andyan, no? Yeah, kita nyo? Yeah. I'm highlighting it with my mouse. Benchmark against. Yes. Okay, correct. Thank you, Liam. Benchmark against time. Tinitingnan natin yung progression niya. Okay? Kaya nga meron tayong horizontal anal vertical analysis. Okay? Ito, per year lang, no? And then horizontal analysis between years. So tinitingnan natin. Okay? For example, ito. Ang ibig sabihin nito, <clears throat> the total assets increased from 2018 to 2019, there was a 96% increase. So halos 100%. Pero noong 2019 to 2020, 22% na lang yung in-increase ng total assets natin. Okay? So benchmark against time and ano yung C? Benchmark against what? Can anyone tell me, guys, ano yung C dito? Okay. Clue, guys. Yung project nyo, ganun ang gagawin nyo. No? Benchmark against Karen. <clears throat> okay, Elijah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Elijah, for your answer. Pero ang answer, yeah, you're correct, God. Uh, yung sa Karen, Elijah, that's sa, sa time. No? Benchmarking against time yun. Yung sinabi ni God, yung competitors, that's correct. No? We benchmark against the competitors. Kaya nga, guys, dalawa yung FS na pinapakuha sa inyo. Kasi titinan nyo kung ano ba yung performance ng company natin relative to the benchmark company. Okay, so just a reminder guys, mas maganda kung ang kunin nyo na company nyo is yung lesser, quote-unquote, lesser performing para your benchmarking up. Okay, so yung mas, mas stable, mas magaling, yun ang gawin yung benchmark. Okay, so benchmark against time, benchmark against competitor. All right, so let's uh, continue here, guys. Okay, let's continue with this one. So here are some answers, guys. Some of them we have already answered. Okay, so may mali lang sa time dito, no? Uh, yung 20, okay, uh, my apologies for this one. Okay, baguhin ko lang to ng konti. So dito, okay, uh, home, Okay, uh, find and select, <clears throat> replace. So lahat ng 2020, yun muna ang papalitan ko, gagawin kong 2019 para clear lang yung questions. Uh, replace all. 
So lahat ng 2020 dito guys, yung kikita nyo na mapapulit ka ng 2019 yan. Yan. Tatlong replacement daw. Okay. And then next is 2021. Replace ko ng 2020. Okay. Para hindi ko na iisa-isa yan. Replace all. Okay. Four replacements na Okay. There. Ah, mas mabilis, no? So 2020, 2019. Kasi 20 hanggang 2020 lang yung FS natin. Dito nakalagay 2020. Okay, so some of the questions here, guys, na nasagot na natin. Okay, compare ROIC for 2020 and 2019. Kanina, sinagot natin yan. Did the growth add value? So sa 2019, hindi. Sa 2020, yes. So what's market value added? Nasagot na rin natin. Okay, calculate EBA. We have already done that. The next batch of questions, ito na, guys, yung ratios. Okay, so ratios are very helpful, guys, because it helps us assess the performance of a firm. We say that ratios, uh, <clears throat> when you do ratios, you're, you're, look, no, you're, uh, no, you're comparing values with values. Okay, so we just don't, for example, uh, last time, sabi natin, sinopat, kunyari. Hindi natin kinukuha lang sinopat, tapos sinasabi natin, kinukompare natin yung nopat ng isang company at saka nopat ng isang company. Pag gawin naman natin yon, guys, all we can say is which NOPAT is, is higher. No? Higher or lower lang. Hindi natin pwede masabi kung mas magaling yung isang company vis-a-vis -vis the other company. We can only do that, guys, when we do, when we take ratios. Diba? If you recall, guys, uh, very quickly lang, just for review, si baka nakalimutan nyo. Diba last time, sabi natin, okay, uh, may illustration, diba yung NOPAT? Ba? Tapos sabi natin, si company A, okay, ito yung example natin last time, di ba? Yung sa advanced technologies company na tinitin natin. Company A had an opat of 59,520 59, yata. Company B <clears throat> had an opat of 1 million. Okay? We can say that company B had a higher opat than A. Of course, guys. That's a fact, no? We cannot question that. Mas malaki yung opat ni A ni B kaysa kay A. But as to conclude that B is better than A, oops, that's not correct. No? Kasi we have to do ratios. Yung isang ratio natin na ginamit dito is to use TOC beginning. Ba? TOC beginning para ma makuha natin yung ROIC. And then if you recall in this example, 630 yung, yung, RO, yung TOC beginning ni A giving us a 9.45% ROIC, dinivide lang natin. Then, just to dramatize the example, sabi natin ito, ang NOPAT niya, ang ano niya, TOC, 10 billion. So, ang ano nito guys, ang ROIC is 0.1%. <clears throat> Therefore, masasabi natin na mas maganda yung performance ni, ano, ni A kaysa kay B in terms of ROIC. <clears throat> so, we did, not, we did not just assess yung absolute values ng NOPAT kasi we'll go wrong with that, no? So ngayon, may comparison tayo. Ang sinasabi natin dito, sa bawat piso ng operating capital na binigay kay A, nakapag-generate siya ng ng uh, 1, 2, 9.451, Okay? It was able to generate uh, 1, 2, tama ba? Uh, 1, 2, tama. Divide by 100.0, 0 0.09 lang, sorry. Ah. Sorry, my mistake. 0 0.0945. So that's 9.45 centavos per peso of total operating capital. Ito guys, 0 0.0001. Okay? Sa bawat piso na binigay kay company B, ang na-generate lang niya na profit is 0 0.1, 0 0.01 centavos. That's not even 1 centavo. Ito 9.45 centavos. Ito. 0 0.01 centavos. Okay? So, 1 one hundred of a centavo lang. Napakaliit. No? So, company A performed better. So, we did not just base it on on the NOPAT, but we use an um, financial ratio. Okay? So, when assessing performance between two firms, we use ratios. Hindi pa pwede yung, yung isang metric lang, kunyari net income after, after tax. Kasi we have to look at 
how uh, how these figures fare relative to a certain benchmark. Okay. So yung ratios natin limang klase ito. So yan, nakalagay na dito guys yung limang klase ng ratios, no? L A M D R uh, P R and then M B, no? Okay, so let's identify what these are. Ano ba yung L? L stands for liquidity. So let me move this first. So liquidity ratios. Liquidity. So liquidity ratios tells us uh, of the capability of the firm to pay its current obligations as they fall due. So it tells us how capable is the firm to pay its current obligations when they become due. Okay? So yun ang binibigay sa atin ng liquidity. Okay? Isa naman, asset management, AM. Si asset management, ang sinasabi sa atin yan, how well was the company able to utilize its assets in order to generate profit for the company? Asset management. Very important to guys, yung asset management. Makikita natin kung uh, efficient ba yung company sa paggamit ng resources nila. <clears throat> okay, then we have DR, which refers to debt ratios. How leverage is the company? Okay, that is sinabi natin na importante din yung debt. May purpose yan. It provides leverage for the company. Okay, it provides stock savings. It also provides funds. Kung merong opportunity for the company, uh, for a business for the company to invest in. Okay, importante yung paggamit ng debt. No? And then we have also profitability ratios. Okay, ito tinitingnan natin bottom line. Okay ba yung mga... Uh, so we just don't look at net income after tax. No? It, it, uh, net income after tax is an important metric in order for us to compare across time and between competitors. So benchmarking is always, guys, benchmark with respect to time and benchmarking with respect to benchmarking with respect to competitors. Now, yung across time, pwede ang titinalan natin yung net income after tax lang. Okay, pwede natin sabihin na net income after tax has been increasing or decreasing over the years. Okay? Pero pag sinasabi natin na yung pag ipocompare na natin to and we're talking now of efficiency, we're not talking of performance, uh, hindi pa pwede yung metric lang na net income after tax. We will have to take ratios. Kasi net income after tax, hindi ratio yan. An example of ratio is ROE, return on equity, ROA, return on assets. So we make use of uh, accounts, two or more accounts, hindi lang isang account, hindi lang isang metric. And lastly, guys, yung MB, MB is market value, market value ratios. Okay? So in your project, guys, gagamitin itong limang to. So i-co-compute nyo yung mga uh, this set of ratios for your company and for your benchmark company. Kaya nga tayo makakapag-compare. Kaya tayo makakapag-benchmark across time kasi three years yun. Three years which uh, uh, translates into two, fig two periods. <clears throat> diba? Kasi kunyari 2018, 2019, 2020, dal dalawang periods yun. Between 2018 and 2019, and between 2019 and 2020. Okay. So, any questions, guys? Paki chat nga kung clear so far yung, yung limang ratios na to liquidity, asset management, debt ratio, profitability, and market values. Kindly chat, please, if uh, so far okay yung, ano, yung limang ratios na to. Any feedback, please? Any response? Kung define pa lang naman natin, guys. Hindi pa naman natin kinocompute ng mga ratios. Okay? Any questions about the five ratios? Liquidity, asset management. Yung details, itinanan natin ngayon. Okay? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Gillian, pakisend sa ano? Pakishare yung question mo. Yung mga ratios, guys, ginagamit natin yan for benchmarking. Benchmarking across time and benchmarking with our direct competitors. Okay. So thank you for that question, Gillian. So you're correct, no? 
benchmarking against time and benchmarking against competitors. Okay, so let's start, guys. Anahin muna natin tong liquidity ratios natin. Okay, so liquidity ratios, dalawang klase. We have quick current ratio and quick ratio. <clears throat> okay, first, current ratio. <clears throat> it tells us, guys, of the capability of the firm to pay its current obligations. Okay, take a look at the formula. Current assets or current liabilities. So ang makukuha natin na answer dyan, kunyari 2.7, how do we interpret that? Okay. Lagi nyo, lagi nyo guys, ililink dun sa formula. So, ibig sabihin to 2.7 over 1. Ibig sabihin, for every peso of current liability, meron tayong 2.7 pesos ang current assets in order to pay our current liability. Okay? So, is that good or bad? Again, guys, ang, ang pwede lang natin masabi na capable yung company based on current ratio. So, yung good or bad, guys, it has to be benchmarked across time and across its competitors. <clears throat> we can only say, guys, na good or bad kung bine-benchmark natin yan across time huh? and across uh, with, with its competitors. Laging ganun. Okay? Uh, again, the YAM, uh, in the sense that, in the sense that, capable yung company kung para bayaran yung, ano, yung current liability, <clears throat> yes. But yung goodness or badness, guys, again, we can only answer that if we're benchmarking. E paano kung yung last year, ang ano niya, ang current ratio was uh, 3.0? So, ibig sabihin, bumaba yung current ratio niya. Okay, so, in that case, guys, in that regard, then uh, yung 2.7 na current fails in comparison with the previous year na 3.0. So, in that sense, we can say that that's bad, no? Kasi bumaba yung ano niya yung capability niya to pay, to pay its current liabilities. So let's compute, guys, yung current ratio natin. This is simply current assets. Take a look at the balance sheet. Ah, sandali, no? Uh, so that mas mabilis yung formula ko kasi mahaba ito, no? Uh, let me... Let me hide this. <clears throat> hide ko to. Hide. 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 <clears throat> Alright. Para at dito na guys yung ano. At dyan ka yung mga figures. Okay. So current ratio is your current assets. So these are your current assets. Total current assets divided by your current liabilities. This one. Yeah, 2.3. And then we can copy this formula to the right. Alright. <clears throat> Okay, let's interpret, guys. Noong 2018, sa bawat piso na current liability, ibig sabihin kailangan nilang bayaran yan within the year. Kaya nga, ibig sabihin ng current liability, these are obligations that will become due within the year. No? So meron si company, si XYZ, ng 2.3. Okay? So uh, it, it's more than able to pay its current obligations with 2.3. However, from 2.3, naging 1.5 siya. So we can say that the current ratio in 2019, okay, uh, the company was uh, less capable in 2019 as compared to 2018. Kasi naging 1.5 na lang yung, ano, yung current ratio niya. So sa bawat piso ng current liability in 2019, naroon na lang siya 1.5. Okay, still, still enough, no? <clears throat> still enough to pay its obligations. But compared to 2018, you know, guys, ah, nagbe-benchmark ako, ah. Compared to 2018, okay, mas mababa, mas less capable yung company to pay its current obligations. When we go to 2020 ngayon, tumaas siya, 2.6. So 2.6 relative to 2019, mas, mag mas maganda yung condition ng company XYZ to pay its current obligations. Okay, naglagay ako dito guys ng, ano, ng, uh, ng spark line. Ibahin na lang natin ito. Ano? So, design, gawin ko na lang line. Okay, para mas, ma ma balita, mas mabilis natin makita. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. However, guys, we need to benchmark. Ito, guys, uh, may mali ito, ano Hindi industry ito. Pakilagay competitor. Competitor. Okay. This is the competitor. No? Okay. We not only benchmark. Okay. Ito. We not only benchmark against time. We also benchmark, guys, against our competitors. 
So we can say that company XYZ is, is uh, less capable of paying its current obligations. Kasi si competitor 2.7 yung current ratio niya. Si company A, okay, this is 2020. Yeah. So hindi natin pwede compare 2.7 sa 1.5 guys kasi 2020 yung pwede natin compare. Kung meron tayong 2019 yung competitor, then we can do that. Which in our project guys, you can do that. No? Kasi uh, ang kukunin nyo, 3 years eh. So parehong 3 years. So may, may basis tayo ng comparison between years. So 2019 ni company XYZ, 2019 ni uh, competitor. How does it compare? So I can only compare here 2020. Mas magaling yung, mas capable si company A, this company competitor, to pay its current obligations as they fall due kasi mas mataas yung <clears throat> current ratio niya. Okay? Any questions guys so far about current ratio? Clear ba so far? Pakichat na lang kung yes or no. Clear so far guys yung current ratio. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Now, it's important guys uh, not to yung nga, ang ratios guys hindi lang isa yan, no? Kailangan may iba ka pang tinitinan. Kasi ito si current ratio, okay. So sabi natin at in 2020 si XYZ had more than enough current assets to pay its current obligations, no? 2.6 current assets per 1 peso of current liability. However, you have to look further. Kaya nga meron tayong pangalawa, no? yung quick ratio, which is a more stringent measure. Kasi kung titignan natin, guys, if we take a look at our, let's take a look at our current assets. So ano ba yung quality ng current assets natin? <clears throat> si cash, 9,000 lang. Okay? Si short-term investment, ito madali rin makonvert into cash to. Kanyari, treasury bills yan, treasury notes, madaling i-ano yan, i I treasury bills, no? medaling i-benta sa market. No? So meron tayo nito. No? In, yung AR, guys, ito yung isang problema natin. Kasi sa AR, it depends on how fast the company is able to collect. Kung mabagal yung company mag-collect, may problema tayo. If the company is not able to collect very fast, then we have a problem here. Tapos ito pang inventories. Eh paano kung it takes a long time for the company to convert these inventories into sales. Uh, we have a problem. Okay, kung i ito, ito lang titignan natin, guys. Okay, cash, short-term investments, and receivables. Hindi aabot to ng 481,600. Kung maging June na ito ngayon, guys, may problema tayo. Hindi natin mababayaran ito. <clears throat> kung nangulekta na, guys, yung, ano, yung si supplier natin, kung mag-June na yung notes payable natin, Kung accruals, kailangan na natin bayaran yung kuryente, yung tubig, di ba? Itong mga utilities, for example. Totaling 481. Anong pambabayad natin? 9,000 lang yung cash natin. Si 48,600, pwede natin ibenta kagad sa market. So that's only 57. Si AR, gano, gano ba natin kabilis maano yan? Makukolekta? It depends on the nature of your AR. Kung makukolekta natin, kinabukasan din to, then okay lang, pero kulang pa rin tayo. Kasi this is around 410,000 lang itong tatlong to. E ang utang natin 481. Okay? So we don't just stop there at the current ratio. Merong mas strict na measure guys. <clears throat> mas strict na measure yung tawag natin dyan, yung <clears throat> quick ratio. Okay? So we go to quick ratio. Si quick ratio guys, another name for this is another name for this is your acid test ratio. Tulad ko lang ha. Acid. Acid test. Ibig sabihin ng acid test, talagang ito na yung pag-check talaga, pang-test talaga kung <clears throat> makakabayad tayo. <clears throat> so ang difference ng current ratio guys and acid test ratio or quick ratio is in the numerator. Notice dito, sino hindi natin sinama sa current assets? Anyone please, pakichat. Sa acid test ratio, sino hindi natin sinasama sa current assets? Dalawa. Di ba? Ang current assets, lima yan. So, sa acid test ratio, tatlo lang ang sinasama. Sino ang hindi kasama sa acid test ratio? Okay. Go guys. Go chat. Chat or unmute yourself. 
AR. <coughs> Hindi, kasama si AR eh. Ayan no? Si R. Uh, AR yan, receivables. No? <coughs> so, sino hindi kasama? Yes, inventories. Thank you, Gab. Uh, thank you, Jay. Pero kasama si AR. No? But thank you for your answer. Gab, inventories. Yes, tama. Di ba? Hindi kasama si inventories. Walang inventories dito. Kasi guys, inventories, siya yung pinaka, uh, isa siya sa pinaka, ano, least liquid among the current assets. Sino pa? May isa pang hindi siya nasama. Sino pa guys? May isa pang hindi sinasama sa current assets dun sa <clears throat> quick ratio natin. Yes. Oh, hindi. Kasama si ano, short term investment. Liquid yan si short term investment diyan, no? <clears throat> Fixed assets, okay? Tingnan natin mga answer ha. Uh, thank you Liam for your answer pero ang hindi ito yung ano, yung MS guys, marketable securities that your short term investments. Elijah, fixed assets is not current assets. No? So, hindi papasok yan sa liquidity ratios natin. <clears throat> you can never sell immediately your fixed assets para magbayad ng current liabilities. No? At saka, we don't do that. We don't sell our fixed assets para mabayaran natin si suppliers. Nari, binili natin ng raw materials. Okay, so what else, guys? <clears throat> uh, alam nyo, guys, yung composition ng current assets, di ba? Anong current assets ang hindi kasama dyan? That's the answer. Fixed assets is not current assets. So ano, guys? Ano sa current assets ang hindi kasama to compute for your quick ratio or asset test ratio? Okay. Alam niyo yan, guys. Alam niyo yan. I, I'm confident that you'll be able to answer that. Kasi napag-aralan na natin yung ano eh. Tsaka sa accounting nyo. Ano ba yung mga, ano, ano ba yung mga current assets? Anyone, please? Okay, correct. Prepaid, guys. Walang prepaid dito. Di ba, guys? Lima yung current assets natin. Cash, marketable securities, receivables, inventory, at saka prepayments. Yung dalawang dulo dun, guys, yun yung mga hindi liquid, no? Uh, it depends sa inventory kung, uh, kung, it depends kung how fast the company is able to sell its, uh, its inventory. But generally, guys, yung inventory at saka yung prepayment, sila yung least liquid, kaya sila yung hindi sinasama sa asset test ratio. Okay? Okay, so let's see guys. Ito, nakikita na natin, may problema tayo, di ba? Kahit kasama yung <coughs> AR guys, hindi pa rin kayang, kaya nito na bayaran yung current liabilities natin na 481. It doesn't add up, no? Okay? If I just sum this, is equal to sum, Uh, AR, short-term investment, cash. You only have 408,000. Eh, ang utang natin na babayaran, 481,600. Okay, so that can be a problem for the company. Okay? Alright. So, complete natin, guys, yung quick ratio natin or asset test ratio. It's the sum, sum of your quick assets, cash, short-term investments, receivables. Oops. Yung tatlong yan. So those three, and then divide it by current liabilities natin, pareho rin, total current liabilities is one. <clears throat> okay? Okay. So now, guys, now makikita natin na kung talagang pag-uusapan natin yung ora mismo, makakapag-bide na tayo. Uh, and then assuming natin na, ano, na makokolect na natin si receivables, hindi pa rin kakasya, guys, yung ano natin yung available payments. Okay? So this is a very important ratio, yung quick ratio. Are we capable of paying our current obligations pag naging due na sila immediately? Okay, so we just included the, ano, the uh, uh, most liquid current assets, cash, marketable securities, at saka receivables. Kung easily collected yung receivables, then medyo may fighting chance pa tayo kasi We have 80 centavos to pay yung current, current obligation natin na, uh, na piso. No? Okay? We just have to hope that yung inventories natin <coughs> mabilis din mabenta tapos makulet, no? But ito rin ito yung problema natin. Lalo na yung 2019, guys. Sa bawat piso na current liability, ang kaya lang natin bayaran is 50 centavos. Okay, that's a problem, no? Ito yung acid test ratio. And in 2020, nag-improve naman siya. 
Okay, so titingnan natin ang lowest point, di ba dito sa ano? Ang lowest point sa 2019, dun sa quick ratio natin. Highest point is 2020. Okay? So across time, binibenchmark natin. Okay, so ang pinakamaganda natin noong 2020 relative to 2018 and 2019. However, guys, when we benchmark against competitor, yung 2020 quick ratio natin na 0.9, it fails in comparison with one Sydney competitor in 2020. So, si competitor, kaya niya, no? At par lang yung ano niya, yung current liabilities at saka yung quick assets niya. Okay, tayo, may problem tayo. Kasi 0.9 lang yung ano natin, quick ratio natin. While si competitor, one. Okay? So, those are the two... <clears throat> Those are the two. Meron pang isa yung cash ratio pero hindi natin titinan yun. Kasi si cash ratio guys, uh, si cash lang at saka si marketable securities. No? Yun lang i-add natin. Kasi ito red, readily available for cash na to, no? Madali naman ibenta yan. <coughs> so divided by the current liabilities. Okay. So mas strict yun. No? Mas strict kasi yung, yung uh, sinasabi natin na talagang readily available for cash na. Si AR, Again, depende yan sa nature ng receivables natin. Bali natin may mga ano dyan, may mga outstanding na namatagal na pwede nang hindi ma-collect ng company. Okay, pwede maging bad debts, no? Okay, or uncollectable accounts. Pag nagkaganoon, di lalo nang may problema yung company. Okay, so that's in terms of the company's capability to pay its uh, current obligations. Kasi di ba pangit guys kung hindi nagbabayad yung company? That's a no-no sa business operations because you will lose the trust and confidence of your supplier. Hindi ka napapautangin. So kailangan, pag bibili ka na, money down na. Okay. Then we go, guys, next to... Okay, uh, pause muna ako. Any questions dun sa, uh, dun sa liquidity ratios natin? Okay, again, let me post it in the positive. Clear so far yung current at saka yung quick ratio or acid test ratio. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Dream ko talaga guys, lahat sumasagot. <laughs> uh, wala, hindi, hindi ko nakukuha yun eh. No? Hindi ko nga alam kung paano, kung paano mak kung makukuha yung ano yung... 100% participation. Okay. Uh, never ko pa nakuha guys yung 100. Unless nagpo-poll ako. Kahit nga sa poll guys, pag nagpo-poll ako, hindi ko pa yung nakukuha yung 100%. So again guys, I, I need feedback from you. I need you to reassure me also. Okay. For my purposes then that uh, we're okay so far. Kasi it makes no sense for me to continue kung Kung ano pala, kung masyado na mabilis siya explanation ko, kung hindi yun na naiintindihan, no? Hindi yun ang gusto natin. It's not speed over the discussion. It's not being to, able to cover many materials tapos hindi pala natin nakukuha. Okay? But for those who answer, guys, thank you so much. Okay, let's now go to asset management ratio. Ito, uh, depende kung uh, dun sa kabilang section, hindi namin natapos, no? Hanggang dito lang kami sa cash conversion cycle. Pabalikan pa namin ulit next time to. Okay, which brings me guys to, okay, realistically guys, hindi natin matatapos lahat to ngayon. Okay? So may I guys, is it okay with you kung yung exam natin sa Monday, <laughs> gawin natin Wednesday, okay, yung long quiz natin, so that uh, matapos natin to. Okay, okay ba sa inyo yun? What's the pleasure of the class? Uh, you can have it, of course, on Monday kasi. Pero uh, I will assume, guys, na, na <clears throat> you looked at this on your own. Okay, so ano bang pleasure ng class? Okay lang. Okay, thank you. Pero yung iba, guys, hindi sumasagot. Okay. So gusto ko majority guys so uh, dapat more than dapat more than 50% ang magsabi na okay. Ayun. Okay. 
All right, thank you. So I think more than 50%. No? Ano siguro gagawin ko lagi? Dapat majority. <laughs> Kasi hindi kayo sumasagot pag hindi majority. No? Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Punta tayo sa asset management ratios. Asset management, sabi natin, these are ratios that determine how well the company is able to manage its assets okay, so that it provides profit for the firm. Okay, meron tayong anim dito. Ito. So magkakamag-anak to actually itong walong to. These are related. No? <clears throat> okay, so let's start first with the uh, inventory turnover. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng inventory turnover? As the name suggests, guys, inventory turnover, ilang beses sa isang taon na nagta-turnover tayo ng inventory. Ano ibig sabihin ng proseso na yon? Bibili tayo ng raw materials, i-convert sa finished product, ibebenta, no? Yun ang yun ang ano, yun ang isang isang cycle ng inventory. Buy raw materials, convert it into finished product and then sell. Okay? So ano ibig sabihin ng 6.1 na to? Sa isang taon, yung competitor natin, okay, let's illustrate that, no? Para mas clear sa atin. So, ano ibig sabihin ng IPO na 6.1? So, let's do a timeline here. Okay. So, this is 2020, no? So, this is January 1 hanggang December 31. This is for one year. One operating period, isang calendar year. So, ang IPO ni competitor, IPO is equal to 6.1 times. Pag, pag turnover time siya. So 6.1 times, ibig sabihin nun, okay, bibili siya ng raw material, convert into finished product, sell. Hanggang mabenta. One time. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. Fifth time. Sixth time. Tapos may konti pang point one dito. So ibig sabihin, sa isang taon guys, yung proseso na yan, na bibili ng raw materials, convert into finished product, sell, Six times yung nagagawa. 6.1 times. Sell. Sell na naman dito. 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 Okay. After, after converting, after, uh, after buying raw materials and converting it into finished product. So therefore, guys, ang IPO, inventory turnover, the higher the better. Okay. Ito yung velocity ng inventory. Alam natin sa physics, di ba yung vel velocity, no? Uh, yung scalar niya, yung speed, di ba? So, ilang beses gumagalaw sa isang taon yung inventory. So, kung 20 times yan, ibig sabihin 20 times, umiikot, guys. Umiikot yung inventory. Which is very good. So, the higher the inventory turnover, the better. So, this is the inventory turnover of of, uh, ano, of our of our competitor. Now, tignan natin, guys, inventory turnover ni ano, ng company natin, si XYZ. Okay? Compare natin. So that's our timeline. Let's go to our inventory turnover. Okay, take note, guys, that the formula here is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. Bakit natin kinukuha yung average inventory? Kasi, guys, si cost of goods sold, one period yan for the whole year. Kung inventory lang, guys, kunyari ending inventory lang, that's only one point in time. So hindi siya nagmamatch. No? So dapat si cost of goods sold, period siya for isang taon, Inventory din dapat natin, isang taon din. Okay, that's why we use average inventory. Okay, so let's compute for that. So this is equal to, we want one formula and then drag to the right. No? Cost of goods sold is over here. Okay, this is cost of goods sold for 2018 divided by. Okay, divided by. <clears throat> so gagawin natin average. No? Divided by, as in formula natin, it's average. Yan. Okay. Average ng ano? Ng inventory. So that should be beginning and ending. Okay. Ngayon tinan natin si ano? Si, uh, si 2018. Ito yung ending niya. Pero wala siyang beginning. Pero so that the formula, we, so that we can copy the formula to the right, lagi pa rin natin yan. No? So that's B21, C21. Alam natin na ang B21 guys, walang laman yan. It's a text. So, Hindi di sa guard lang ni ano yan, ni, uh, ni Excel. Okay, I'll show you in a while. No? So pag rinag natin yung formula dito, to the right, it will now be the average of D21 and C21. So tama na. 
Okay? So tama tama pa rin ba to na sinama natin si B21 kahit na text ang laman niya? Yes, tama pa rin yan guys. So I'll show you. So that's our formula. Cost of goods sold 2018 divided by the average of uh, inventory 2018 and 2017. Kaso walang 2017 but that's okay. Let me show you guys. Ano to? If I highlight this, what's the value of that? 715,200. Tignan nyo. Asan inventory natin? This one. 715,200. Okay, tama. No? Tama. Pina-average natin 715,200 dito sa B21. Eh, since wala naman siya nakitang value dito, then dinis sa guardian. So it's as if average of 715 with itself. So 715,200. Control, you see? Okay, so that's our formula. No? So control, enter. And then we can copy to the right. Okay. Tama ba yung formula natin? Yes. Average ng 2019 and 2018. Okay. And this one, average ng 2020 and 2019. Okay. So we have this inventory turnover. Nung 2020, guys, 3.9 yung company natin. Nung 2018, four times. Nag-improve nung 2019, naging five times. Pero nag-deteriorate siya ng 2020, naging 3.9 times. To add insult to injury, si competitor natin 6.1 times. Okay? So uh, halos more than twice no? na nagagawa ni, ni competitor yung goods na bebenta, tapos na, na nabebenta. No? Uh, ang laki niyan, guys. Ang laki difference. So their company is not at par with our direct competitor. Ang layo, no? So, siyempre, from a managerial perspective, dapat pag-aralan yan. Bakit? Ano nangyayari? Is it because ang bagal ng proseso natin ng, ano, ng, ng paggawa? Baka bagong, bagong machine ang ginagamit ni, ano, ni, ni competitor. Tapos tayo, sinauna pa yung ano natin. <clears throat> yung machine nila nakakagawa ng 100,000 units a day. Tayo, 30,000 lang. Ah, ba? So, <clears throat> ano yan? Kailangan yan. Pag-aralan yan. Should the company now... How do we expect now to be able to compete with the with our direct competitor kung sala yung ano natin, kung palpak yung equipment natin? Or ano kaya? Baka ang dami nating wastage. Okay, baka ang dami nating na-waste na ano na 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 inventory, na raw materials. Kaya bumabagal talaga yung inventory turnover natin. <clears throat> okay? So these questions, no? These questions have to be answered. Hindi lang, uh, hindi lang for decoration yung, ano guys, yung, yung figure na yan, yung ITO. Uh, masusing pag-aaralan ng management yan. Titignan yung, uh, i-check yung operations sila. Bakit yung competitor natin 6.1? 6.1 times a year tayo, 3.9 times lang. Diba? Uh, nakakalungkot, no? Uh, baka lamunin tayo ng ano, hindi na tayo makapag-compete kasi Hindi natin pwede rin hindi natin mabenta yung goods natin. Okay? Si ano, 6 times siya nabebenta, tayo 3.9 times lang. So 1, okay? 2, 3, okay? And yung point 0.9, no? Ito. Ito yung point 0.9 natin. So 3.9 times lang tayo. 3.9 times. So tingnan niyo naman guys, yung velocity dito. Ito ang bagal. So, saan mabagal? Sa paggawa ba? Mabagal ba sa pagbenta? Kasi hanggang pagbenta yan eh, di ba? Bakit mabagal sa pagbenta? Eh, palpak yung product. Hmm? Hindi siya masyadong pinapatronize. So, bakit palpak yung product? So, these questions, guys. No? Have you heard of the fishbone or pareto diagram, guys? Na-discussion na, na ba yun sa operations? Yeah? Sa operations subject? Yung fishbone? O yung pareto? Ever heard of this, guys? Paki yes or no nga? Yes or no, please? Kung, kung nakita nyo na to? Guys? Okay. No. Okay, good, good. This, because it's another opportunity to learn, guys. No? Okay, papakita ko lang, ha? Ah, hindi ko na-discuss sa kabilang klase to. No? Uh, okay. Ayan guys, no? ito. This is the fishbone diagram. Example lang. 
Okay, this is the, another name for this is the Ishikawa diagram. Okay, so dito ang ginagawa guys. <clears throat> uh, there are different types no, of Ishikawa diagram. One way is to use this for root cause analysis. Kunyari ang pinaka main problem is ano? Kunyari, ha, example lang. Ang pinaka main problem natin, let's say uh, uh, poor quality ng product. No? Tapos mag magtatanong tayo bakit? So, i-define yung mga causes. No? Ano yung mga causes? And then, dun pa sa cause, may sub-causes pa yan. Bakit pangit yung product natin? Kasi pangit yung raw materials. Bakit pangit yung raw materials? And then, you keep on asking why, 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 why. No? Until you see, ano ba talaga yung pinaka, ano, ano ba yung pinaka root cause? So, another name for this is root cause analysis. Okay? So, uh, magandang tool to guys, tong Ishikawa diagram, no? or uh, I don't know if you're going to discuss this in your operations. Uh, may subject ba kayong operations? I'm not sure guys. Meron ba? Pakichat nga. Meron ba kayong subject na operations uh, sa ABM? Operations management? Ah, wala ba? Sure kayo? Wala? Ah, okay. Sige. Anyway guys, uh, magandang uh, this term. Uh, this year, no, this school year. Okay, so baka hindi nyo pa nakukuha. No? So I'm not sure if you're going to uh, discuss this, yung Ishikawa diagram or fishbone diagram. But guys, you can, of course, you can uh, search the net. Ito naman, pinakita ko na sa inyo. Kasi ginagamit yan sa root cause analysis in order to really arrive at what's causing a uh, a problem as far as operations is concerned or any, any other issue is concerned. Dito kasi, 6.1 times si competitor tayo, 3.9 times lang. Okay. Uh, pag hindi natin ma-address to, baka that might be a possible potential reason for us to close shop. So ito, dapat nag alarm bells na to for management. Nagtatanong na, bakit? Bakit? Uh, then papasok na yung Ishikawa diagram. No? Magagamit natin si Ishikawa, uh, yung fishbone diagram yan, para to identify yung, yung cost. No? Okay. Dali, anong mga sa ba? Ano oras yung ano natin, guys? Hanggang 12.30 lang pala ako. Wala, magta-time na. Guys, <laughs> uh, ito, ano yung kulat to, guys, ha? Uh, so, kitang-kita natin, guys, na hindi talaga tayo matatapos, ano? So, R2 naman, R2 is equal to sales over average AR. So, let me just show the formula. Sales divided by average, average accounts receivable. Ganun din, guys. Punta tayo sa AR. Gawin natin technique na ginawa natin kanina. Okay. Isama natin itong previous. Control, enter. Okay. Okay. So that's your <clears throat> ARTO. Tapos ito din gawin ko. It's, uh, it's cost of goods sold divided by average accounts payable. So cost of goods sold divided by the average accounts payable. Average accounts payable. This one. Control enter. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then last, ito na lang guys, no? Base inventory outstanding is equal to. Okay, lagyan natin to guys ng pangalan. 365, I'm going to put here operating days. Operating days. Okay, ito. So days inventory outstanding is equal to. Uh, operating days, upper days, divided by, ito, no? ITO. Since my ITO na tayo, ito yun. Okay. Let me stop there, guys. Uh, guys, may request ako, ha? kung pwede, please, uh, pakisagutan na itong iba. May mga formula sa man dito para mas mabilis tayo next meeting. No? Ang gagawin natin, uh, flash ko to, lalagyan ko na rin ang answer to, tapos analysis na lang tayo. Kasi andiyan na naman yung mga answers ano. You can see here already the answers plus itong ano, itong DuPont no, which uses ROE. Sabi nga natin mas maganda si ROIC kaysa ROE. Pero aralin na rin natin kasi gumaga ginagamit pa rin tong ROE, return on equity. And then itong Altman Z, this is used in, to predict kung magiging bankrupt yung isang company. Okay? So, dali no. Yeah, 12:30 na it's already time no. So let me just a few seconds lang guys no. Uh, tapusin ko lang to itong 
Itong R to guys, it's, it's the number of times na kukollect mo receivables. So si competitor 10 times a year, tayo 9.3 times lang. So as far as R2 is concerned, talo tayo. No? Ito, average payment, uh, average payment turnover, sila 15 times a year, tayo 11.4 times lang. So sino mas maganda? Yung up to natin o yung up to nila? Okay, mas maganda guys yung up to nila. Okay? I'll explain next meeting kung bakit mas maganda yung accounts payable turnover nila. Okay, ito na lang guys yung BIO, Days Inventory Outstanding. Itong Days Inventory Outstanding, okay, at saka yung BIO, mag magpinsan to, no? Ito. Ito. Ay, itong ITO, no? Magpinsan yan. Ito, ang measure ilang times. Ito, ilang days. Ang ibig sabihin nito guys, nung 2020, it took us, the, it took the company 95 days to uh, buy raw materials, uh, convert into finished product, and then sell. 95 days. Samantalang si competitor, 60 days. 60 days, na, nakolekta, ano, ano nila, nabenta na nila. E tayo, more than 35 days bago natin mabibenta. No? Well, palpak talaga. Palpak. Then, kindly compute for DSO, DPO, ito, no? So, we'll continue with this next meeting. Okay? So, makikita natin dito, guys, yung, yung, uh, dito nag-improve yung base inventory outstanding natin. Pero, ng 2020, guys, 95 na, no? Tumagal. Tumagal yung paggawa, pagbili ng finish, ng raw materials, paggawa ng finished goods, and then pagbenta. 60 days yung competitor tayo, 95 days. Okay? Uh, with that, guys, let me stop the recording now.